Hello and welcome to ASMR Whisper. Let me bore you to sleep. Oh, let's have a drink. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. <sighs> uh, my name is Jason Newland and I was just thinking, just thinking, na na ba ma ma ba Yeah, just thinking about, uh, I don't know how many of these I've done now. Uh, for those that have never listened to and to this ASMR whisper, let me bore you to sleep. It's basically just a let me bore you to sleep podcast, but whispering instead of talking. Which probably doesn't explain. So I'm doing my sit. That was my. <laughs> you just heard this, didn't you? Uh, what's my trousers? It was my cardigan. Because I'm old, I wear cardigans. Yes. <laughs> I do. So, um. It's kind of just a, a vlog. Um. A, but without the video, it's just me chatting about stuff. Stuff. What I thought I might do is have a look through this book. Just, you know, chat to you while I do that. So I've got a few big books on clinical hypnosis and that that section of books in front of me I would class as the well not all of them but uh, not, all, not the only ones I've got but textbooks they're quite thick quite juicy big old books in fact what I'm going to do I'm going to get them down And I'm going to show them to you. I'm not going to, you know, not physically, but I'm going to do that. So you can see. Oh, hold, hold on a second. Hold on. Stop being so impatient. to let itself down so I have to keep pumping it up right so I'm going to go through these books these are my most um, in fact how many are there there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 21. They're not all big books, but most of them are quite big. Uh, the first one I've got and this is the one I 
I've had the longest is called Handbook of Hypnotic Suggestions and Metaphors. Metaphors. By the way, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Because this is going to be boring. Prepare for the ride. The weird thing is, the light isn't very good, so I can't really see much. I can see, but it's not... It's not light enough to read, really. But then I'm not going to be reading, am I? Stop judging me. <laughs> so, this, this book is, it's a hardback. I think you can get it in a softback, paperback. Uh, it's not really paperback, not when it comes to a page, you know. It's got 558 pages, and then there's the references after that. Oh, this smells nice. Oh, I've had it years, and it still smells nice. This was an originally written in 1990. But it's re been republished. Wow. Oh. According to this, this is a first edition. Okay. Fair enough. 1990. So, there's quite a few. It's got big red cover. It says inside, this book is dedicated with deep love and affection to my children, Matthew, Erin, and Christopher, and Mark. Forward. Hypnotherapy is the application of hypnosis in a wide variety of medical and psychological disorders. Adequate training in psychotherapy is a prerequisite for practicing hypnosis, regardless of whether the clinician is a psychologist physician, social worker or dentist. In fact, training in psychotherapy and hypnotherapy is a never-ending process. Oh. So, uh, I have a degree in counselling, so I'm kind of technically not psychotherapy. I did study the subject. <laughs> oh no! Contents forward by Harold B. Kreselnik. Kreselnik, brilliant surname. Introduction The Underlying Therapeutic Philosophy, Intricative Hypnotherapy. Uh, and then number two, formulation, formulating hypnotic and post-hypnotic suggestions. Number three, hypnosis in pain management. Hypnothesia, hypnoanesthesia and surgery, preparation for surgery. That's number four, ego strengthening. Number five, enhancing esteem, self-efficacy, and confidence. Then you've got anxiety, phobias, and dental disorders. Hypnosis with cancer patients. Hypnosis with medical disorders. Hypnosis with obstetrics and gynecology. Gynecology, uh, hypnosis with emotional and psychiatric, psychi psychiatric disorders, <laughs> hypnosis with sexual dysfunction and relationship problems, hypnosis with obesity and eating disorders, smoking addictions and habit disorders. Uh, 
like concentration, academic performance and athletic performance. Hypnotic suggestions with children. Time this time reorientation, age regression, age progression and time distortion. <sighs> wow. And there's the last one, uh, which I don't normally mention. It's the hypnosis for s that book, Handbook of Hypnotic Suggestions and Metaphors. That's a good old book. It's a big, 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 big book. It's not the biggest book. Uh, it's, it might be the biggest book I've got. section of uh, like scripts so I've got a few books different scripts, hypnosis scripts and techniques so I have that in with them that's got a section in my library so this is another book that I've had I had this book for over 20 years however uh, this is a newer version of that book it's called Heartland's Medical and Dental Hypnosis by David Waxman. When I had this book before, I must have read it quite a bit because it fell apart. Seriously, it fell apart. Wow, what's this? Blimey, I've got it here. Wow, take two times a day. I've got it here a uh, Wow, blimey. So this is 2015, June 2015, it's, sorry, it's a doctor's uh, prescription, so I've clearly had this book, the Medical and Dental Hypnosis book, since 2015, because I tend to use whatever's about for, as a book, uh, bookmarker, and I've used this. I find all kinds of weird stuff over the years. I used to use train tickets. And I'd look back and like 30 years ago, I'd have to be a train ticket for a, I don't know, a, a one to four zone travel card on the underground in London. <sighs> Amazing. Well, it's not amazing. But this is this is my old address. It says here aged forty four. I'm now fifty two. Blimey. Wow. <gasps> oh no. No, this this isn't this isn't um June 2015 that's when the review date is for the medication this prescription it says it was issued on the 17th of December 2014 17th of December 2014 blimey 7th of so literally just before Christmas. <sighs> so 
strange, 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 strange. It's just weird to see stuff like that. Just going back that far, nearly, you know, December, eight years ago. Oh well. And to see my age is 44. I was a baby. <laughs> so, this Heartland's Medical and Dental Hypnosis book has... Okay, before the appendix, so... The actual book finishes of number 485 pages. Then there's the appendix. But it's not a big book, if you know what I mean. It's not like a large book. Let's see what the contents are. Forward, uh, forward to the second edition by Milton H. Erickson. Forward to the third edition by E.R. Hilgard and to the third edition by G. Guantieri. Um, and there's acknowledgements, preface and stuff. So the contents, part one, the history, nature and techniques of hypnosis, the development of hypnosis, the nature and theories of hypnosis, general principles underlying the induction of hypnosis, some preliminaries to trans induction, methods of trans induction and deepening, further methods of deepening the trance state, trance resistance, difficulties and a test for trance, a comprehensive system of trance induction, deepening and post-hypnotic conditioning, some phenomena of hypnosis and the use of advanced techniques. The common phenomena of hypnosis. Somnambulism and other phenomena. Uh, number 11 is post-hypnotic suggestion and other techniques. Number 12, these are the chapters. Hypnoanalysis and analytical psychotherapy. Number 13 is Ericksonian hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming. I'm pretty sure that that wasn't in the original copy of this book. Uh, part 3, the clinical applications of hypnosis. So number 14 chapter, general considerations and uses of hypnotherapy. 15. The Treatment of Neurosis 16. Hypnosis in the Treatment of Problems of Personality Number 17. The Treatment of Psychosexual Problems Number 18. Hypnosis in the Alleviation of Pain and in Surgery 19. Hypnotherapy in Obstetrics 20. Pediatric Hypnotherapy 21. Hypnotherapy in the Treatment of Depression Number 22. Hypnotherapy in Chronic and Terminal Illness 23. The Use of Hypnosis in Dental Surgery the book's called Medlin and Medical and Dental Surgery and you don't even talk about dental surgery or using it with dentists until you get to page 439 439 and even then 439 49 59 it's only 18 pages. I don't mind that. 
I find that quite weird, personally. What does Milne H. Erickson say about this book? To write a foreword to this book is a most unusual pleasure and privilege. The book is not one primarily based upon other men's ideas with special interpretations elaborately evolved to explain the work of those others. Nor is it simply a survey of current literature on hypnosis. It is rather an earnest, sincere, objective account of one medical practitioner's experience over a period of 25 years, detailing instructively in an orderly, systematic fashion the learnings he has derived from his day-to-day -day encounters with all manners of patients in his busy medical practice. That's interesting, isn't it? It says, uh, goes on to say, one realises while reading this book that the author had a much greater purpose in mind than adding just another book to the literature on hypnosis or a recounting of varied experiences solely for their interest. Each page makes clear that a long overlooked and seriously neglected need is being fulfilled. One of great importance in the furtherance of the scientific modality of hypnosis as an important adjunct in the healing arts. A methodology of the medical use of hypnosis of great value to the patient himself and to medicine as a whole is developed and adequately, adequately elucidated in this book. Cool. So that's that book. Heartland's Medical and Dental Hypnosis by David Waxman. That one is the third edition. Uh, this one's called The Skilled Helper, but I'm going to leave that one out because that's not... That's for therapists, uh, but it's not for hypnosis. It's not specifically to do with hypnosis. Uh, a problem management and opportunity development approach to helping. I'm, I'm not sure if I'll ever read I'll ever actually read it. Because I'm not sh It's... Um, it's a little bit um, yeah, it looks a little bit above me, above my um pay grade, as it were. It looks a very complicated book. I got that I think that was recommended during my degree course. I'm not sure why. Maybe I'll learn more. So this next book is not a big book, but it is. Um, Three hundred and sixty-seven pages. It's paperback or softback. Well, I suppose it is paper, but yeah, I like this book. I like the look of it. I don't know why. It's a nice size. It's not. You know, you could carry this around, or you could have it in a bag. Some of these other books are way too big. Um, so this is called Hypnosis, Advanced Techniques of Hypnotherapy and Hypnoanalysis by Terence Watts. And it says on the back by Kevin Hogan. There's another person I need to get his book. He's got his author of the new hypnotherapy handbook. I might have it, I'm not sure. But it's a good book, I used to have it. This book is the crowning achievement in the field of hypnotherapy. Terence Watts breaks new ground and brilliantly opens the door to many new techniques and strategies of hypnosis. This text will be one you refer to again and again, 
my highest recommendations. I can have a drink. I feel like I need to hurry up because I've got so many books to get through. I've only got through a couple so far. Maybe if I don't read the table of contents. I just want to. So for this one, um, part one is analytical working methods. So chapter one, uh, getting to grips with the idea. Childhood learning process, a gateway to core thought. Jigsaw of the mind, the total learning machine. ISC and SSE. I don't know what they are. I might do, but... No, I don't. I might... Oh. Uh, chapter 2. Conscious Working Techniques. Analytical Regression Without Hypnosis. Hysteria. Conscious Questioning Techniques. Pushing the Client. Cognitive Dissonance. A Case History. Chapter 3, Brainwork and Personality. The Invisible Therapist. Personality and Therapy. Hysterical Illnesses. An Easy Personality Test. Phobia Disguised as Obsession. Personality Outcomes. Blimey, there's a lot here. Chapter 4, Techniques for the Therapist, uh, The Book of Life, Not Today, Regressive Progression, The Miracle Box, Tell Me a Story, The Single Frame of Film, Mini Parts Session. Chapter 5, More Techniques, Different Futures, But Referral, Ref not But Reversal, Don't, Can't. Provocative Therapy, Central Core, Part 2, Archetypal Parts Imagery, An Introduction to a New Style of Working, Okay, Chapter 6, Archetypal Parts Imagery, Introduction to Inherited Instinct and the Origin of Conflict, This is heavy in it, <laughs> Heavy Man, Earth template, the as is template, emotional filters, memory. Chapter 7 Parts Imagery at Work. The major players, selfish parts, the sub parts, working with specifics, workable conflicts, working with abstracts, getting to the point. I've never done that. <laughs> I've never got to the point, ever. Chapter 8, Doing It, Part 1. The credul cred I'm great with words and I blimey. The credulity factor. Working with reality and imagination. Symbolism. Conversational working. The meeting. Reintegration. Chapter 9, doing it part 2. The inner advisor. Perfect wisdom. The fake. The messenger. The fantasy world. The permissive world. Non-human parts. Symbols. Chapter 10, doing it part 3, Theatre of Imagination, Magical Arena, Parts Regression, Reason for Resistance, Looking at a Life, Ending the Session. Chapter 11, An Overview of a Case. A complete study of archetyped, archetypal parts therapy work based on actual case.
Case History Chapter 12 A Few Genuine Case Studies Acrophobia, Relationship Difficulties, Weight Problems, and Marital Problems Always late, always drunk, what? Blimey. Violent outbursts and stutter. Part 3. Miscellaneous ideas and concepts. An outline of the final section of the book. Chapter 13. Abreaction and catharsis. Erroneous association. Complications. Spontaneous abreaction. Client sticks. Emotion not abating. Contraindicators. Chapter 14. Working with sexual issues. Client sexuality. Sex and guilt. Embarrassed and embarrassing. Same sex therapist. Discomfort on display. A sign of the times. That was a good soul, Prince. Sign of the times. Sign of the times. Anyway, something contentious. That's, um, I'm going to leave that. I can't even have to read anymore. The next one is Hippolyte Bernheim, Suggestive Therapeutics. This is a very famous book. It's a very, very old book. Um, so basically, it's been... Um, it's been reproduced, if you know what I mean into a paperback but this isn't the original version of the book in fact this is um blimey this that's on amazon there's quite a few out of print books you can get but they're not good quality necessarily they might be bounded nice, you know, they'd be well bounded and like a proper book. But the actual insides and the pictures, well, you know, the the typing and the, you know, it might not always be perfect. But with something as old as this, it kind of doesn't matter. Uh, so let's see if it tells me how old it is. This is Suggestive Therapeutics, a treatise on the nature and uses of hypnosis. Bernheim. I can't see. It's old. I can't find the actual year. Unless there's a full word. Preface to the last edition. Oh, yeah. So, this is preface to the last edition, and it's November. So, Bernheim, uh, November 1887. So, that's why, you know, it's not the uh, perfect quality. It's 416 pages. It's a very famous book, that. So I got this book. Uh, I've had this, not this version, but I got this book late 90s. And it's, what is this?
um, I've got a, I don't know what the hell this is. I've got a postcode, a, po a postcard. And it says from 2006. 10th of the 5th, 2006. Uh, just, I don't know. it wasn't for me it might not be mine because it says J but it doesn't say Jason J just had a two hour session that's what it says on the postcard just had a two hour session in finances was six in the queue Sorry, but I had to say you are my wife again. All in a good cause. Paid a total of £104.60. And told you official... What? Um, yeah, it's not for me. It's not mine. So this is someone else. Yeah, this is someone else who ever owned this book before was using that as a uh, bookmark, I guess. I didn't get rid of that, I don't want that. Someone else's post postcard. So this book, Hypnosis, A Comprehensive Guide, Producing Deep Trance Phenomena by Ted James. Just found out he passed away recently. Um... I actually listened to some tape cassettes of Ted James. I used to have quite a few of his audio recordings on my iPod. Back in the day, going back a while, I listened to him hundreds of hours listening to that man. Okay, so there's a good book. It's kind, I know it says a comprehensive guide, but it's kind of an introduction in a way to the hypnosis. Because table of context, contents, chapter one. <sighs> introduction, mind-body connection. Chapter two, a brief history of hypnosis. If you've got a brief history of hypnosis, then it's kind of, kind of an introductory book, isn't it? Trance, multi model patterns of hypnotic language, utilization, personal history, pre-talk and suggestibility tests, stages of hypnosis, Ericksonian methods, two Ericksonian inductions, Ericksonian interventions, the pendulum and other idiomotor signals, metaphors, progressive test inductions based on Easterbrook or Estabrook's uh, deepening techniques and post-hypnotic suggestions, Elman methods, developing your induction style. Conclusion. So this book was from two. Oh, it says two thousand. No. No, <laughs> not originally. It wasn't originally 2000 because I had this in the 90s. Pretty, yeah, I did definitely. But then it says first published in 2000. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I suppose. I must have got it when it first came out. Fair enough. Can't argue with facts. Well, you can, but then you'd be a bit. Oh, 
I'd be like everyone else. Arguing with facts. Foundations of clinical hypnosis from theory to practice. This is Edwin K. Yeager, PhD. Um, it's not a large book, but it is hardback and it's definitely a textbook. And uh, just have a look how many pages. 236 pages before the glossary. So it's not like a huge, huge book, but it's sturdy. It, I don't know, just, it seems like if you didn't, if you saw a picture of it, you'd think it was bigger. <laughs> uh, it sounds, might sound weird, but it looks like a big book, but it's not. This is a long awaited and excellent account of the multiplicity of hypnosis that will be a valuable resource for both new and experienced therapists. Tom Barber, course director, Contemporary College of Therapeutic Studies. That's on the front page. So it's definitely a text. Crown House Publishing Limited. I don't think they're even around anymore. This is... Uh, 2008. Contents. So you've got background, chapter 1. Hypnosis as a concept. Chapter 2, the language of hypnosis. Chapter 3, the phenomena of hypnosis. Chapter 4, the tools of hypnosis. 5, hypnotic hypnosis. Hypernesia. Okay. Hi hyper hypermnesia. Okay. I struggle with some of these words. I do. Um, part two: clinical considerations. So chapter six: two basic approaches to using hypnosis. Chapter 7, The Roles of Hypnosis in Psychotherapy. Chapter 8, The Risks of Employing Hypnosis. Part 3, or oh, Chapter 9, the, signif the Significance of Hypnosis in Informed Consent. Uh, chapter th Part 3, Specific Procedures. So Chapter 10, Principles of Trans Induction. Hypnosis attached to sleep, subliminal therapy, then you've got applications of hypnosis, chapter 13, applications having unique characteristics. I just realised there's loads more. Isn't that the same thing? 
they both got the same name of their parents. If you're William C. West of the second, oh no, because you might, there might be a William C. West that might be your granddad or your great granddad. Eli name. Um, I can't even. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I can't even grasp the concept of having a child and giving it my name, my exact name, and then putting a two at the end of its name, or putting Junior. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. I think every child has a has a right to their own name. <laughs> I don't like this book just because of that. <laughs> I'm joking. Right, this is from... I can't see what year it is. 1984. So yeah, 1984, it's got 29 contributors. Daniel L. Rose. I'm just looking if there's anyone I know. Uh, Erica Fromm, yeah, I've heard of Erica Fromm. William S. Kroger, yep. William C. West, the second. He sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's one of the authors. Another one, that's a big old book. This 
this is a smaller one, Hypnosis in Clinical Practice, Rick Voigt and Molly Delaney, Steps for Mastering Hypnotherapy. So this is a paperback, kind of, yeah, paperback. Um, 146 pages. And so, contents, uh, it's from 2004, contents, just about stuff. They, by the way, the clinical hypnosis one that I was just reading there, it's quite a thick book. I think it probably sounded it, didn't it? There's a lot in there. 630, 636 pages. The next one, a clinical hypnosis textbook, Professor Ursula James, with contributors. Forward by Ernest Rossi. So yeah, there's quite a few. There's I have to skip through them. I can't believe I've still got quite a few left. Damn, damn, damn. A handbook of clinical hypnosis. Now, it's got the word handbook. It's big. Honestly, it's heavy. It's hardback. And it's not cheap either. This was brand new. So, some of the books are second hand, some of them are new. Like, this one is new, definitely. But that clinical hypnosis one was second hand. Uh, 764, 765 pages. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Wow. Um... Stephen J. Lynn, Judith W. Rue, and Irving Kirch. Kirch. The thing is, it just feels really nice. It's a nice book. The next one is Clinical and Experimental Hypnosis. I think I mentioned this earlier. William S. Kroger. So, or maybe I didn't. This has actually got a DVD with it. This is a second edition. Wow. According to this, the first edition of this was 1963. Blimey. Wow. But then it says here, there's a foreword here. From July 1977. It's just quite an old book, but reprinted. Uh, this one is Mind Body Therapy by Ernest L. Rossi and David B. Cheek. I'll skip through that. A clinical hypnosis primer. So these are like. That's 390 pages. And now I've got a tiny little clinical hypnosis book. Tiny. I don't mean like tiny, I can't see it without a microscope. But 40 pages. It's one of those books that I order and I get it through and I can't believe how little it is. Right, a practical application of medical and dental hypnosis. That's not the same as the other book, the other dental one. This is, is it? No, because that one's Heartland's Medical and Dental Hypnosis. Different book. I hope it's a different book. Yeah, it is a different book. So that's good. Um, the next one's model 
Modern Clinical Hypnosis for Habit Control. This is an old book. I can tell just by the picture on the front. This has got to be 70s. Oh, 1985, okay. But it just looks old. Well, it's, that is quite a long time ago, I suppose. 1985. So that's uh, model cl Modern Clinical Hypnosis for Habit Control. The next one is called Trance Work. Michael P. Michael D. Yapko. And this is an introduction to the practice of clinical hypnosis. It's a paperback, but it's big and uh, 543 pages. Now, the last three books in my kind of, I guess, clinical hypnosis section, they've not all got the title of clinical hypnosis, but most of them do, is a Handbook of Clinical Hypnosis. Now, I'm sure. Didn't I have a handbook earlier on? Clinical help, no fit at. This uh, a different, this better be a different handbook. Oh no, I've only got two books exactly the same. No! No! That's annoying. Didn't even know. Completely different covers. One's hardback, one's paperback. Um, com different design, everything. Handbook of Clinical Hypnosis. They're different editions. But... <laughs> How annoying. So yeah, that's another version of that one. Ah, oh, never mind. Uh, Oxford Handbook of Hypnosis. Theory, research, and practice. This is a big old thing. It's paperback, but it's wow, over seven hundred and sixty pages. And lastly, it's not really last because I've actually got a book over there, clinical hypnosis with children. But it's in my hypnosis with children section, so I've just kept it over there. This last one is the Handbook of Contemporary Clinical Hypnosis. Wiley Black Blackwell is the publishing company, I think. Edited by Lee, Les Brown, Jackie Owens, and Anne Williamson. And this. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, another big old book, 600 and, um, okay, before the glossary, 589 pages. It. I just thought I'd share these with you. I know it's, 
it's not quite the same if you can't see the books maybe but you know what a book looks like generally what it feels like you can get an idea I couldn't read the glossary or the uh, index of contents for each book because I would be talking for about four hours but maybe I'll choose another one and just go through that maybe a different day I'll go through the children's books or through the pain relief books or through the uh, scripts books or through the uh, I don't know NLP books or through the Milton Erickson books just going to have a look And there's other, other ones up there which don't necessarily have a category. So that's that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. I hope I've bored you significantly, sufficiently, and I'll return very soon. Lots of love.